Hey everyone, what's up? Here's something loud. The Soundbox project is a Bluetooth speaker made completely from scratch using custom PCBs and 3D printed parts. The goal was to put together a powerful Bluetooth sound system for my desk to replace the sound speaker project that I have previously made. Also, the whole build guide of this project, which contains all the files and the information about this project, can be found on this project page. Link is in video description. Here, we are using a 12V 5.2AH battery source in conjunction with two powerful 15W speakers and a ZK TB21 audio module. In addition, we have incorporated a custom RGB LED driver that powers the background illumination on the backside of the sound system using a Raspberry Pi Pico for aesthetic purposes. The sound box has five sound control knobs which control the frequency, tremble, volume and bass. Here is the simple design I came up with. The entire body is designed in the shape of a cube and the front has a speaker grill created of splines. The control knob for the audio module were positioned on the top face and an RGB LED diffuser that light up the background is located on the rear side of the speaker. Regarding the internals, we put two speakers that we used on the interior of the front face of this project. The speaker grill was modeled to fit on the front face using four M3 screws situated on each corner. We have created a holder element that is first secured to the mounting holes of the audio module and then the entire assembly is fixed within the base to keep it in its place. After exporting each component into an STL file, they were all 3D printed using white PLA and golden yellow PLA with 0.2mm layer height and 1mm nozzle. The PCB design of this project's RGB board was super simple as it only contained an array of WS2812B RGB LEDs connected in parallel with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Schematic was made in total three sections which were the AMS1117 and the battery section, the Raspberry Pi Pico setup and the WS2812B LED array. We need to add an AMS1117 voltage regulator configuration in order for Raspberry Pi Pico and LED to function because we are utilizing 12V lithium ion battery as our power source. This arrangement setup steps down the 12V of battery to steady 3.3V. Two capacitors are connected to the input and output terminals of the AMS1117 in a simple configuration. A 10UF capacitor is attached to the input side while the 1UF capacitor is linked to the output side. Additionally, an M7 diode and a switch has been placed between the input CON2 terminal and the AMS1117. A DC jack will be added using the CON2 to charge 12V battery. Following the creation of schematic, we have created the PCB design and layout component on the board based on the PCB model created in Fusion 360. All the SMD components, the RGB LEDs and the AMS111 setup were mounted on the bottom side. On the top side of the PCB were Pico along with additional THT components. The PCB way provided the PCBs for this project. We uploaded the Gerber data to their PCB quote page and placed an order for white solder mask with black sales screen. We received the PCBs in less than a week which was extremely fast and the quality was excellent as always. I've been using their service for a while now and it's always excellent. Check out PCB way for getting great PCB service at a less cost. Using a solder paste dispensing needle, we first add solder paste to each component pad one by one. Next, we pick and place all the SMD components in their place on the PCB using an ESD tweezer. With extremely caution, we lifted the complete circuit board and place it on the SMT hot plate, which increases the PCB temperature to the point at which the solder paste melt and all the components are connected to their pads. Next, we add all the THT components which include the header pin, Raspberry Pi Pico, the CON2 GST connector to their location and then solder their pad using a soldering iron. Here's the code which was used in this project and can be downloaded from this project page. Link is in video description. 
The ZK TV21 is being used in this project, which is a 2.1 channel audio power amplifier based around the TPA3116 D2 power amplifier IC. The TPA3116 D2 is a class D stereo amplifier that can drive speakers up to 100 watt. To drive 200 watt speakers, the ZK TB21 utilizes two of these TPA3116 D2 chips, one for the left and right speaker and one for the subwoofer. Also, there's a Bluetooth audio IC on this board, which let us connect this board for audio streaming. I have used this board in few of my past projects, which you can check out. As for the sound, we are using 8 ohms 15 watt speakers paired with the ZKM TV21 audio module. First, we assemble the speakers onto the main body, which was quite easy. We take two 15 watt speaker and install them inside the main base. Eight M2 screws were used to permanently fix the speaker after they were positioned inside the main base in their designated spot. Next, we use four M2 screws to add a grill to the front of the main body. As explained earlier in the design process, we have modeled an audio module holder part that is mounted with the audio module so the entire assembly can be placed inside the speaker body vertically. Next, we take the whole assembly and slide the audio module into the place. At last, we use M2 screws and secure the audio module holder in its place. As for the wiring process, we connect the positive and negative terminal of both speaker with the audio module, left and right speaker connectors. Next, we connected a con to wire harness with the audio module's input connector. This wire harness will be connected to the RGB LED board's GST connector for powering the audio module. Before beginning the back lid assembly process, we gather all the remaining components which included one DC barrel jack and two rocker switches. We place both rocker switch in their place along with the DC barrel jack. Subsequently, we set the RGB LED board in its designated spot after adding the diffuser, keeping the diffuser in between the PCB and the lid. The PCB is then secured using two M2 screws. Next, we add both rocker switch wire harness on the contour of the RGB LED PCB. We connect the cathode of diode to the charging connector of the RGB LED PCB and place it in series with the input terminal of the DC jack. In order to serve as a charging indicator when the charger is plugged in, we additionally add LED to the input side of the DC barrel jack connector that is coupled with a 1K register. By passing a 12 volt input power supply through the DC barrel jack connector, to test the setup, we can see the LED board is receiving power and the indicator LED lights up. As for the battery source, we are using a 12 volt to 5.2 AH lithium ion battery pack. We constructed two battery pack clamps to attach the battery pack within the base. Four M2 screws are used to fasten the clamp with the base body, 
holding the battery pack in place. The last step in the assembly is to connect the power harness of the audio module to the RGB LED board's audio connector. Next, we solder the battery terminal to the RGB LED board's battery terminal and the wiring process is completed. After sliding the lid into the position on the back, we fasten the main body to the back lid using 6 M2 screws. Lastly, we install the potentiometer knob that came with the audio module kit on them. Here is the end result of this simple build. A loud boxy sound system which look like a cube. We tested the audio quality by pairing an iPad with this sound box by Bluetooth and play few songs. <laughs> An intriguing addition to the speaker was the RGB LED that illuminates the background and plays Pacifica animation continuously. Overall, this project was complete success and required no further versions. I have included all the files in this project page which you can download and try to make one of your own. Leave a comment if you need any help regarding this project and this is it for today folks. Special thanks to PCBWay for supporting this project. You guys can check them out if you need great PCB service and stencil service for less cost and great quality. And I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.